name is Will Castle Condre. Born and raised here in Trent, New Jersey. Um, 40 years old, I recently entered a new decade. I've been a professional artist now for the past 14 years. So for me, doing art, of all media, I'm known for my murals. You know, I've been I've been a professional muralist, I would say for the past 10 years, 10 to 11 years. I've been doing it, I've been out here putting murals up professionally. And I've always believed in the power of art in a sense where how it could bring people together. And it's healing, it makes you feel good. So I've always been known to be very prolific. You know, I create, for me, create, you know, I have to create. It's almost, it's nothing short of an addiction, you know. Not just with murals, but all forms of art. You know, I paint, I draw, I sculpt. The artist has a responsibility to convey a message of truth. You have to be honest about everything when you're an artist. Because if not, it'll show up in your work. You know, I'm a firm believer that the the artist is basically a conduit for for a greater calling or a greater message, you know. And I don't want to sound, you know, self-righteous. I just truly believe that art has the ability to make light of a lot of injustices, a lot of wrongs, you know, a lot of untruths, you know, because the truth is always going to come out in your work. Trenton is very economically depressed, not just economically, but spiritually, you know, morally, eth ethically. You know, there's a lot of great things about Trent, you know, and I do my best to promote that, but also to shed light on the things that's wrong with it, you know. Being an artist, you have to be honest about everything, you know, and the people that this work affects, you know, all walks of life. It's not just made for people who have the means, you know, so to speak. It's made for everyone. For me, it's a means to everything. You know, everything I do is creatively based. You know, even sometimes without even realizing it, you know. So, it's ingrained in me, it's in my spirit. This is all, this is the one thing that I've never grew tired of. So for me, I have to infuse it in everything I do so just life becomes manageable, you know. And uh, because, like I always say, art is the most productive addiction you'll ever have, you know. I've been doing this since I was a little kid and the passion is, is probably even stronger now than it was when I was younger because I keep I'm, I keep it fun. I don't go into it with this with this idea that I have to please everyone. Yeah. I, always, I always say that art is a very selfish profession because I want to be paid to do exactly what I want to do but at the same time it's very selfless because I'm sharing my gift with the world. I'm putting myself out there, you know. It's like every time you put up a new piece you're stripping yourself. You know, you're shedding a new layer, you know? So, you have, you, it makes you very vulnerable because you open yourself up to all kind of criticisms, you know, and, and judgments, you know, and people's opinions about what is, what is and what isn't appropriate. But at the end of the day, I promote my truth, you know? And I can only promote my truth. I can't promote your truth or someone else's, but I can bring light to someone else's plight, you know? And I believe that the more we put ourselves out there in a positive light, the more good things that have come back to us. You know, a city, a town like Trenton has a long way to go, culturally. You know, I've traveled and lived in many other places. You know, currently I live in Vermont. And most people, when I tell them that, it's like, you know, you live in Vermont, you've been a part of this city, Trenton, all your life, like how how was the transition? And I was like, you know, in the beginning, it was a little uncomfortable. You know, it wasn't like this 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 smooth transition. Like I just hopped in Vermont, everything became great. It took some time to adjust. But the one thing I tell everyone is that I'm supported there. You know, my work is supported. I've matured. My work has matured. And one thing an artist doesn't want to be is stagnant. You know, I really felt like I wasn't growing anymore out here because I kept repeating the same patterns and I also felt myself going backwards. And I didn't want to regress, you know? And I was regressing everything I was doing, from my personal life to my, to the way my work was being produced. You know, 
I just wanted to keep moving forward, keep growing. You know, an artist, as an artist, you never stop growing. As a human, you never stop growing. As long as you allow yourself to be educated, open yourself up to new possibilities. You know, and for me, being in a new state, literally, figuratively, emotionally, has done wonders for, for not just me, my family, but also my work, you know? Because I've grown, so when I come back into an environment that in my last days that I felt that was stunting my growth, I promote growth to those who don't have the luxury to move and maneuver the way I do. I always believed that, you know, I always had the, the privilege to travel and do art in other places. I've been all over the country. I've been as far as London and Mexico internationally. Producing, any, anytime I travel, it's more than nine times out of 10 to produce artwork. So I learn a lot in my travels. And every time I come back to my hometown, I do my best to instill that, you know? I remember as a kid, you know, I would take art classes, but my brother was too old. He was two years older, he's two years older than me, so he was old, too old to take the classes. So whatever I would learn, I would come back home and show him how to do it. So I've always taught, even when I didn't even know it, you know? It's just the fact that we have that responsibility that if, if our, you know, if our brothers and sisters don't have the opportunity to, to get out, you come back and show them the way. Now, it's up to them whether they want to choose to take your advice or take your knowledge or not. But at the end of the day, you share what you have because we can't take any of this with us. <laughs> you know, the one inevitable is that we're all going to die one day. But the only constant is change. So we have to be willing to change before we die. Yeah? And be willing to share what we learn with those who don't have the luxury to maneuver the way I do. I just, I've just given everything to my craft. I put all the chips in, it's like, I'm gonna do this until the day I, I cease to exist physically. And I'll hopefully, what I leave behind will inspire future generations. Yeah. So I just do my best to keep things moving in a positive direction. There's too much negative, there's, there's enough negativity to go around tenfold. So why not promote a, you know, some things that actually bring people together and make, you know, try to make the world a better place. The more we see of this, the better things will be, period, you know? Because I came from an area where most people didn't, you know, where I grew up, you were lucky to make it to 21, 25, you know? Without a, a long rap sheet or just, you know, death. You know, a lot of people I came up with ain't around anymore. I just stayed ingrained to this, you know? This was my outlet, this was my everything, this was my best friend, and I stuck with it. You know, I just stayed consistent. And it wasn't easy, I, but I have great team of support around me, you know? So I feel like it's my, it's my responsibility to share what I know, whether people are receptive to it or not. As an artist, I'm gonna speak my truth, and I'm gonna put it out there. And you know, whatever comes back, comes back. But you know, at least I can say that I didn't just take what I know and hoarded it to myself. You know, I, sharing is caring. <laughs>
like the, you know the, the one thing about public art is that it forces that dialogue you know you get all walks of life that walk past a mural like this and people who normally you know probably wouldn't even communicate start communicating and the building block to any relationship the first building block is communication without communication you have no relationship so if you want to heal a city or heal a community you got to start communicating you know you have communities especially in a town like this you can live next door to someone for 20 years and not say two words to them you know but if i'm in a position where i need help who i'm going to rely on you're supposed to rely on your neighbor right to help you out but how are you going to rely on your neighbor if they don't even communicate you know, art helps spurs a dialogue, if anything, you know. People start sharing their ideas, their opinions, their, you know, everything. So you have to, you have to look at it like the only way to move forward, first thing you have to communicate, you know. The thing, the beauty about having pieces like this up in the city is that you're getting traffic, you're getting foot traffic, road traffic, you know. Social media, it goes viral, everybody, the whole world sees it, you know? But it is very powerful. And you also have to understand that, it's, you know, with the power that public art wills, everyone is not going to try to use it for good, you know? You got, you got good and evil for a reason. You know, you can't appreciate the good without the bad, you know? And if you're going through the bad, you know, it's hard to find your way to see anything good because when you're in, when you're in a tough situation, everything around you is against you, you know? But it's always that beacon of light, you know? When this whole area is, is painted up, it's gonna be a testament to the power of what art can do. Because with a city like this that has tried literally everything to spur just the interest in coming here, the only thing in my opinion that is um, getting people to really start looking at this town as an investment My name is, is Lydia Pumphrey Franks, and you know, I was just, yeah. uh, admiring a lot of the artwork and that have been, you know, added down here um, along our in Trenton. Um, and I was, you know, saying how this is really something that really changes the, the view and, and, you know, a lot of the abandoned buildings and things that we see while we're on the streets of Trenton. Positive uh, talents of a lot of the artists that are contributing to this. So this is just really wonderful and a, and a great piece of conversation um, because we all look at the um, we all look at the um, the quotes and the little messages that are sent and it's very inspirational and it's just very wonderful to see how you know positive things are, are can be shown in Trenton. But you also gotta you you just can't look at art for what it can do economically, you know? Because money ain't gonna save you. Money ain't gonna make you happy, period. I don't care what they tell you. Everybody wanna be rich, you know? But just being rich, being wealthy starts in here, you know? Protect your energy, protect your health, protect your family and everything else will come, you know? Money is just a tool, you know? And I think the problem when we see public art, especially nowadays, it spurs the whole thing of gentrification. You know, because gentrification is an economic platform that wants to, you know, bring people in, but at the same time, push people out. That's not going to help anything, but, but what is it going to do to the people? The people that's already planted here, you know? The only way you could combat something that strong is through education. So for me, at this point I'm at in my life, I want to use my work to help educate at the same time inspire because education, you know, is the, the seed for inspiration, you know? So I feel that for me, where I'm at in my life, the best thing I can do is always, you know, relate a positive message within the work. You can't expect everybody to relate to the image, but, you know, the words is a whole nother beast. The words can you can make up your own image in your own mind. So the words are just as important as the imagery, but when you put them together, it's very powerful. So we have to, you know, really start valuing our artists. You know, the artists are the ones who bring truth to light, you know. But for so many, especially when you're employing a model for justification, 
artists are just a tool to be used for a means to an end. It takes the soul out of it, you know, when you just put a price tag on it. You know what I'm saying? We all got to eat. We live in America. It's free enterprise. It's the land of milk and honey, right? You know? But at the end of the day, you know, look at, look at what we have around us. Everybody's not doing well, you know? And we can't expect to save everyone or, you know, you know, be, you know, be that martyr for everyone, you know? I, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't condone anyone to take a bullet for anybody. But at the end of the day, you gotta ask yourself what's more important in life. Is it building true community, really helping people, or just using them and commodifying their work to just usher in a soulless movement? You know, gentrification is a soulless movement, you know, because it's based all around money. And money is nothing but a tool. It's just like the ring in Lord of the Rings. If the ring is a metaphor for money. If you're not strong enough, it will corrupt you, you know, because it gives you these endless possibilities in your mind. But at the end of the day, it's a tool. It's no different than a wrench, you know. You need it to help, you need it to build, you know. But in order to truly build, you need community because it's the strongest drug that's ever been created because the whole world runs off of it, you know what I'm saying? Putting the support behind the creatives because the one thing that creative individuals do is that we bring people together, naturally. If you sing a dope song, you play dope music, if you make dope artwork, visual artwork, it's gonna bring people together, it's gonna bring people towards you because they wanna know how do you produce that, you know? And for me, it comes from the energy of the people, the energy of where I'm at. If all around you is depression, eventually you will become depressed and you will start to regress. And I couldn't take that chance, you know, because it got to a point for me where I got in a very dark place, really dark place. You know, when I look at my life now, where I'm headed, I don't want to go back, you know. So for me, Trent, coming out here now, it's still very difficult for me, you know. It's still very difficult for me. So like I tell everyone that I run into, all my friends, all my family, is that I have to take Trent in very small doses from here on in, period, you know. I will always do my best to promote the positive, but I will definitely speak about the negative because one doesn't work without the other. You know, going back to my daughter, Sierra, everything I do, she's the foundation, whether she knows that or not. That's my main, that's my main goal in life is that she thrives. I want to see her thrive. My daughter is so beautiful, so intelligent. You know, Sierra is the reason I am even doing art. If I didn't have my daughter, I would not be doing this, period. Sierra is the reason that I do what I do. Now that she's becoming a young woman, I want to make sure the foundation I laid will make it not so much easier for her. I don't believe in just making it easy because how are you going to learn if it's easy? But having a solid foundation so she can go and promote her truth, whatever that may be. But I love her more than anything. And I just want her to know that. You know, that all that I'm doing is for her. If I can convey some words of advice to Sierra about living out the rest of her life, I would say primarily never be afraid to speak your mind. Never be afraid to say exactly how you feel. Don't bottle anything up. It may, your, whatever you feel may not be the popular opinion to whoever you're expressing it to but it's your truth. Keep promoting and producing the best you you can do, you know? And the only way that you can be the best authentic you is to promote truth. Be honest about everything you want and be, be real. I always, uh, that term being realistic is kind of funny because when most people use it, it's kind of to deter you away from what you really want to do. You know? But I would say be realistic in your intentions on doing whatever it is you want to do. You know, like for me, when I took the leap to be an artist, I had a young family. I had to make money. So I'd go out here and paint everything, but you got to find a way to make some money from it so you can support yourself. So I was very realistic in what I wanted to do. As far as Sierra, being the beautiful, young, talented woman she is, 
I'm not so much worried about her future as I'm worried about her present, you know? Is that because the environment that she's in cre creatively can be stifled, but never stop promoting your truth, never stop speaking your mind, be honest about all your intentions, and go through life not trying to hurt anyone. You know, if you go through it, talk about it, communicate. You know, I'm, I'm a firm father, that's how I was raised. It's like, you know, sometimes you, you can love your child and still be tough, you know? Because it's a cold world, man, you know? And I tell my daughter that raising a young black woman, I was like, you're gonna go into this world, you're gonna see a lot of things that's gonna try to break you down. So the best way to prepare for it is right now. So by the time you reach my age, you have all the tools you need to prosper in anything you want to do, you know? So I just know that what I'm doing now is laying a solid foundation for her.